And just make sure you start listening to your children too, because sometimes your kids will bring something to you and, and you think they're full of shit or you, you don't believe anything they're saying. You kind of scoot them away. So if, if your child come to you and they say something, just really listen to it. Don't cut them off, because I know we in this culture where everybody like to cut people off, but they like to discredit it before they can hear anything. They may be trying to tell you something serious. And they kind of go back to that conversation we had before. I wasn't not sure if it's on the Peeping Sunday where a lot of changes are going to be happening, whether it's the bed or homeschool, because everybody can't homeschool because everybody in the house working. So that's probably going to take for uh, men, husbands in particular, to step up to be able to create an environment where the woman doesn't have to work and she can homeschool. Uh, there's, there's this Christian school that my friend has his daughter in, and it's, it, it operates like a hybrid. So it goes from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade. And the younger kids go to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then they homeschool. So the parents are now put into roles where like, they have to be able to teach their kids. And then once they get to a, I don't know what grade it is, the older kids go Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. So then you get a balance of where you're able to have the child be able to have some form of social skills, but then I spend the majority of their time um, in the school, which I think is great. But you got to think about like how, how are we going to be able to create things like this? Because that's a Christian. So it ties back down to religion. And like he can say, not everybody's religious. Well, we have to start thinking about what can we do in order to create these environments. And it starts back with family. Because if if we if if the women are pouring into the men to be able to strengthen them, to help assist where need be, then he can go out and do what he got to do to make sure all the bills are covered which if you do have children, then the women can homeschool. So it's a lot of things that have to happen in order for us to start seeing these results. And that's why I say it all goes back to what you're doing inside your house. You take care of your house. Um, hopefully your children can look to see what you're doing. And instead of mirroring all your negative and drama, they're actually seeing something positive. And then when they had their kids, they can actually duplicate everything that they've seen you do. So we have to start inside of our own our own homes. We got to start holding ourselves accountable, men and women, because there's a lot of men that's fucked up. Even when it comes down to you choosing who you smashing, who you having these kids with. A lot of kids were born by accident. I don't know too many babies that have even people around me that actually plan to have their children. So kids are coming in and they're already coming into a toxic situation. And now we're trying to figure it all out. So you have to start being a little bit more intentional understand what it is that comes with sex and we and we can just we can start there let's start there let's start being more of an example and then hopefully our future will get better you can't save everybody everybody not going to be saved you can't change everybody everybody can appear looking for solutions i guarantee you the same way you complain that's somebody that's in the email saying thanks for this conversation you helped me out everybody ain't gonna get it and they ain't gonna get it at the same time so you kind of get what you can. If you miss it, guess what? Come on back next Tuesday and hopefully you'll get something else. I agree with that. Yeah. I also think in the in in today's time, being that like like what Hink said, you know, a lot of people are religious. I think that maybe it would be good for, you know, uh families to collectively invest in some type of like, you know, something similar to what a church represents. But, you know, some type of place where there's like a, a social and moral education given, you know, like a place where people can meet and get uh, teachings that reinforce things that will benefit society and community. Because that, that's really what what church is, is supposed to represent. I mean, you know, it's really about, you know, teaching people these morals and these foundational things that help them to better love one another and better connect one, one, with one another and see each other as, you know, neighbors and, 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 you know, equals. So I think if we can just take a lot of the ideas from church, from all the different churches and, you know, find a way to incorporate it all together and create this place where, Hey, you know what, maybe you don't got to go to the club on the weekend. Maybe like, like how we have King talk, um, you know, every, every, every Tuesday, this is basically like church. If you really think about it, you know, we, we get on here and we have these topics and we congregate and we have fellowship. And I mean, that's really what, uh, it, it, that's what it's really all about. That's what community is all about. So I think it, it's it's very beneficial for us to continue to do what we're already doing online. But even like what, what you're doing, JR, as, as far as like setting up actual events, 
I think that's just the next step of what we're doing. Like taking everything that we're talking about online and let's take it offline. Let, let's have these conversations in real world spaces so people can put down their phone and people can actually look each other in the eye and engage and have these heat. Sometimes we get on here and we have these heated debates. And you know what? That's necessary. Sometimes we need to be looking at each other and having these heated debates. Sometimes the older men in the, in the community need to be standing on a, on, a, on a pulpit, on a pedestal and talking directly to the younger people, like in a group. Like sometimes we need to get together and just sing some songs. You know, like we do that in church. We all get together and just sing. After church, we might all get together and eat, you know, just little things like that help to build that that community bond and feeling like, you know what, this other person is someone I can rely on. I know that he just heard the same sermon I heard. And now we we, we can share common goals and common ideals and, and work together for one cause. So I don't think you necessarily have to do it under the banner of religion or God to do that. There's a lot of things that we all as people can can relate to, you know, just simply, you know, treating each other well, you know, not killing each other, not stealing from each other not lying to each other and deceiving each other and hurting one another. I think if we can, if we can continue to focus on those things a little more, morals and, and social intelligence, I think it'll be for the benefit of us all. Yeah, I like that. You know, one of the things that, that I really loved about the events is it's actually, and, and people who I've talked to one-on-one, they hear me say it all the time, is bringing people together. It's all about the experience, just looking at everybody mingle, laugh, and having a good time. Like that's the highlight for me. I don't have to be in front of the camera. I don't have to be the main attraction, but just bringing folks together to be able to socialize and understand it's, it's, it's a bond. It was a certain energy. If you went to Atlanta, if you went to Houston, it was a certain energy, like regardless of whatever you see online. And that's what, what I, I love to see. Like that's what gets me going is when I bring people together and I see us as, as a whole. So, all right. Anybody got any final thoughts before we get up out of here? Anybody want to say anything? Say, are you good? Yeah. So I just want to add one, uh, one, one particular thing. So me and raise your children. Now this can't be uh, stated enough. Like the world makes it seem like me and just have to be out there working, but there comes a point where, and as, as a religious person, like I, I, I come from a religious background, there's no amount of outside uh, influence. There's no music. There's nothing. Nothing replaces the impact of an involved father. So, me and don't underestimate your power and the influence that you have, even if the kids don't listen to you right away. Like that's the one thing I find myself frustrated with my children. I got four of them. And everybody is in their own particular phase now. Like when my kids were uh, not teenagers, they were different. Once you start getting teenagers and they, their emotions and hormones kick in, they're different people. And as a father, we are, we're tasked to raise children. But in raising children, it's kind of like you being raised yourself because you're figuring out how to adjust yourself to relate to four different personalities. And I say this and I say it often. There is nothing there was. You, if, if you look at the metrics for how they determine the 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 potential of the child in terms of their safety, their their likelihood for, you know, you know, going, you know, getting on drugs or dropping out or teenage pregnancies. Like if you plug in the big the biggest factor is the presence of an active father. I'm not talking about somebody who just lives in a home or somebody who's just there. I'm talking about a father who is who is oriented himself to see his children and want to see them succeed and be great in life. And he he sees that to such a degree where everything that he does in his life, whether it's the way he gets up and go to work, the way he shows up for the mother of the children, the way that he takes care of his home, like how they see him volunteer, how, how they see him volunteering, everything that he does is literally because he's thinking on a subconscious level, I am the example for my children. And so fathers, black, white, no matter what color you are, let's make sure that we do not let the world make us believe that we are just helping out, that we are an accessory. No, we are the vital pillar 
upon which the, the foundation of our children are built. So we have to not just be involved in terms of conversation, but your discipline, your the 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 zest and the zeal that you that you live life with, the way that you pursue your purpose, the way that you love, the way that you love their mother, the way that you love your family, the way that you love people, your compassion. All of these things create a foundation in the kid that no entity, no person can duplicate or replicate because that job is reserved for fathers. So fathers, you help raise your children. That's good stuff. I just want to say real, real, real quick. Um, you could still be an absentee father and be in the home. Like what I try to do with like my family, like no matter what, you have to have some time of the day. Uh, for me, I choose dinner time. So whether even if it's like a, a 40 minute conversation, it's still a conversation where all of you have fellowship, right? You you uh, you get their perspectives. You ask them how their day was, uh, different conflicts that they might be dealing with. And we all deal with it collectively. There's no judgment. We just talk. We speak. Um, I encourage people sit at the table when at least for dinner, sit at the table as many times as you can. Just have those conversations with your family, your sons and your daughters. They need you. Anytime if I ha if I'm doing something, if I'm working on my car, if I'm putting a shelf together with anything that I'm doing, I bring my son with me. If I'm going somewhere, I bring my daughter with me. Something like we you have to be involved. You have to have those conversations on the rides on the way there. You need to be engaged and you need to know what's going on in their lives. And you have to build that healthy trust to where they feel like they can talk to you without judgment because they're going to have so many questions if they can trust you to give the answers versus school. And I know people say that they're in the school all day. That doesn't even matter because I'm going to give them more time than that. Right. They're going to be learning most of those times. They're going to be they won't they won't have the time to be influenced because I'm going to make sure I instill my values. And like me and Shannon was talking about a couple of weeks ago, you have to indoctrinate them, period. 